Hello everyone, welcome to Scottish Summit. My name is Will Valida and I'm super excited to be talking to you all today about building serverless machine learning APIs with Azure Functions, ML.NET and Azure Cosmos DB. Now in this session, I'm going to show you how you can train machine learning models using ML.NET and then use those models in Azure Functions. Now this session was inspired by a blog post and a bit of a side project that I did towards the end of 2019 where I thought it'd just be a bit of fun to try and build something cool, small and simple. And I hope that by the end of this session, I would have inspired you to do the same thing using ML.NET. It's fairly straightforward. And even though in this session we'll be using the scenario of building an API, a really basic API, um, hopefully the methods that I show you um, in this session will show you how easy it is to actually inject ML.model, ML.NET models that you build into Azure Functions and how you can apply that to a variety of different scenarios. And just a quick reminder, if you're on social media and you're interacting with other um, attendees of the conference, we all can't be together in person. Um, because of the global situation, which is a massive shame. But if you are on social media, make sure you use the hashtag Scottish Summit 2021 to join in the conversation online and connect with other attendees. And of course, before we begin, a big thank you to all of our sponsors, Script Runner, Global, uh, DQ Global, Proximo Free, Hitachi Solutions, Agile Sys, and Red Spire. Uh, Scottish Summit is free to attend, but running it isn't. And it's thanks to sponsors like this, um, where it, it's thanks to the sponsors that it is free. So a huge thank you to all of you. But first, let me introduce myself. My name is Will Valida. I'm a software engineer based in Auckland, New Zealand. I'm also a Microsoft Data Platform MVP. My main focus is Azure Cosmos DB, but I also like to play around with C Sharp in general, Azure Functions, ML.NET, Databricks, and a variety of different Azure technologies when I get the chance to. Uh, I've been fortunate enough to speak at a variety of different conferences and user groups around the world, and I also like to blog a bit on DevTO, Medium, and just any other platform that I can get my hands on. So like I said earlier, I want to show you how you can use machine learning models that we train using ML.NET in Azure Functions. Uh, we'll be we will be building a very basic but cool API that allows us to predict taxi trip pr prices based on a couple of features. So what I'll do is I'll start off by introducing you all to ML.NET. Then I'll provide a bit of an overview of what we're going to be building uh, during this session, talking about how you can actually inject trained ML.NET models into Azure Functions. And then we'll dive straight into the code. So we'll actually show you how you can inject your model ML.NET models into your function applications and then use them to train models build models and save models, and then use another function to actually consume that model um, by injecting it into your function application. So what is ML.NET? ML.NET gives us the ability to add machine learning capabilities to both our online and offline .NET applications. Using ML.NET, we can make predictions using the data available within our applications. Now central to ML.NET is the idea of a machine learning model. This model will specify the steps needed to transform our input data into predictions. Using ML.NET, we can train custom models by specifying the algorithm that we need to solve our problems, or we can leverage other popular machine learning libraries and import those um, port pre-trained models that have been built using those libraries. For example, models that are trained using either TensorFlow or Onyx. And then once we've trained our model, we can add the model to our applications to make predictions. And in ML.NET, we can perform a variety of different predictions due to the different machine learning tasks available to us that we can use when using ML.NET. A machine learning task is the type of prediction being made based on the problem that we're trying to solve within the, with the data that we have available to us. Now, in ML.NET, we have a variety of different algorithms available to us based on the type of task that we need to perform our scenario. So, for example, we might be performing some classification um, tasks where we're automatically dividing customer feedback into both positive and negative uh, categories. We might be doing some anom anomaly detections. So we might be detecting some fraudulent banking transactions. We may be doing some time series analysis where we're forecasting what the weather's going to be like, or we're going to forecast um, how much of a particular type of product we're going to sell. We might be doing some regression. So we might be able to predict um, the price of houses based on size of 
on their size and location, for example. We might be built, we might use recommendation um, machine learning tasks um, within our applications to suggest products that online shoppers might want to buy based on their previous purchases, or perhaps even um, what type of movies they want to watch based on their previous viewing habits. Or we might be building um, some image classification applications where we're actually categorizing different, um, different images based on what the images are. Building and training models in ML.NET is a straightforward process. First, we'd collect our data. Now, this can come from local files, relational databases such as SQL Server, or non-relational data sources. Once we have our data, we can then start to create our pipeline. Here, we can use the ML.NET API to clean our data, define what our features and labels are going to be, and what algorithm we want to apply to the pipeline in order to solve the problem that we're trying to solve. Once we've done that, we can train our model. Now, depending on the type of algorithm that we choose to train our model, uh, we can use metrics to determine how effective our model is when trying to solve the problem that we're trying to solve, and we can improve and iterate on it as required. Once we're happy with our model, we can use the ML.NET API to save our model into a binary format. Then once we have our saved model, we can load that model into our .NET applications and make predictions based on the data within those applications using our trained model. So in this session, we're going to be building a serverless machine learning API that makes predictions on how much a taxi trip might cost, depending on a couple of factors. Now for this session, what I've got is I've got a couple of local CSV files that I'm going to use to both train my model and to test the model to make sure that it's effective. And we'll have two different um, CSV files, a training set and a uh, testing set um, for the purposes of this demo. I'll be creating a timer trigger function in C Sharp that will train the model and save the model. So this will be simulating a batch processing type scenario. Now, this model that we'll save will be saved to a blob storage account, which will make the model available via URL. I'll then build an HTTP trigger that will pull the URL for the model and load it into the function application so we can use it to make predictions on incoming requests that our API will receive. Then what I'll do is I'll save each prediction that the API processes into a container in Azure Cosmos DB. All right, well, with that all said, enough slides, let's kick into our demo. All right, so here I am in Visual Studio. Um, as you can see, we've got our solution open and we have three projects within the solution. So we've got a model trainer project, um, which is gonna help us um, train our model. We have a core project, which just essentially contains a couple of models that we're gonna be using within both our API project and our model trainer project and also the API itself. So first up, what we've got here is our CSV file. So I've got a local file here called data and I've got, a C I've got CSV files for both my testing data and my training data. And it looks a little bit like this. So here we've got data on a bunch of different um, taxi trips that, were, that, um, that we've captured within the CSV file. And we've got several columns um, on this file. So we've got the, the ID of the vendor, uh, how, what the rate code was, how many passengers were on that trip, how long, the pa um, how long the trip was in seconds, how long the trip was in distance, how the customer actually paid for the taxi trip, and what was the fair amount. And what I've got here is I've got a taxi trip class. And we've annotated, it's a normal class with some prophecies for each of our columns. But for each property, what we've done here is we've annotated um, each property using this load column attribute. And essentially what this does is, as you can see, there's an um, integer position for each property. And this essentially tells our model when we read the file, that's the column that our data is going, going to be at. So as you can see, we've got vendor ID as position zero. So that's the first column in our, our file. Then I've got rate code, that's the second. Passenger count, trip time, di trip distance, you get the idea. And this will be our class that we're gonna be using to actually uh, train, um, um, to load our data into our application. So what I've got here is I've got our function. Now I've written a little bit, bit of this already, um, just not to take up the whole demo, writing the entire thing out. 
But essentially, this is a timer trigger. Now, this timer trigger will basically invoke every five seconds. Um, that's purely for demo purposes. purposes. If you're not too sure what a timer trigger is in Azure Functions, essentially um, they invoke on a time that you give them um, using an ncrob an ncron tab um, expression. And essentially, what this expression says is this is going to kick off every five seconds. Um, what we're going to do in this function, we'll try and authenticate to our blob storage. Um, so we've created a blob client here. We then read our file from our local file source. So we're actually reading the local files in here for both our training data path and our testing data path. We also set a model path that we're going to save our model to. And then we're going to train and save our model using this model trainer helper class and this train and save model method. And once that's successful, we'll um, just log that the, the model has been saved to the container where we want to save it to. And if not, we'll just log the, log the exception. So what we're going to be doing we're going to go into this model trainer helper class and we're going to start um, writing our very first ml.net uh, pipeline together. So the first thing I want to do is I want to load our training data. And for that, I'm going to use something called an iDataView. And this is an object that allows us to save our data no matter where we're getting it from. So here um, we're getting it from a local file. But remember, I said we can get it from a um, relational data store if we need to, or an enumerable object if we're working with, um, working with uh, non-relational data. And essentially what I'm saying is, or what we're doing here is we're going to tell um, our ML context to essentially look for the local file and then load it into, into this iDataView object. So let me just write out the full code and then I'll explain it to you all. All right. So what I've done here is I've got this ML context object. Now, whenever you write uh, applications using ML.net, life essentially starts here. So ML context is a singleton object and it's the common context for all ML.NET operations. So when you're loading your data, when you're training your models, when you're saving your models, everything, basically the ML context um, provides all of those operations available to you. Um, so here, what we're doing, what we're saying is, okay, using the um, data operations catalog, we want to load from, a lo um, load from a text file from this train file path. So using this training data set, we're loading that as our um, training data. We're also specifying that this file has a header. Um, so we're um, defi setting that to true. And the separated character will be just a comma. Cool. And just a quick um, pointer out, something I forgot to mention a little bit earlier. When, you, um, when you're wanting to use this ML context package, essentially, the package that we're going to be using is Microsoft.ml. And then there's a variety. I've actually opened up uh, NuGet for you. Depending on the type of algorithm that you're going to be using, um, it changes on the the package that you need um, changes. So if I just type in Microsoft.ml. So Microsoft.ml will be the base class available to you. So that actually makes um, stuff like ML context and all the operations and catalogs required to build your machine learning pipelines are available in here. For this um, demonstration, we're going to be using a regression algorithm in the FastTree library. So I've already downloaded that for, uh, for this package. But as you can see here, we've got a variety of different packages depending on the type of operations that we're going to be using um, that you use. Uh, within your application. So we've got one for image analytics, one for TensorFlow if you're integrating ML.NET with um, uh, models that you've built with using TensorFlow, time series, there's some Onyx transformers. So there's a whole variety of different packages available to you depending on what you're going to be doing within your application. All right, so back in the model trainer helper, what we need to do now is build our pipeline. Now, depending on the nature of our data and the problem that we might want to solve, our approach to data preparation will, will change. The thing to note is that all algorithms within ML.NET expect a float vector of a known size as an input. So we're working with categorical data. So looking back at our CSV file, 
We've got our vendor ID, which is categorical data. Uh, payment type as well is also categorical data as well. Um, so essentially what we need to do is convert our data into numerical format and process it into a features column uh, in order to predict a label. So let me go back into the model trainer class. I'm trying to help a class, sorry. And let's start creating our pipeline. So what I'm going to do is just go create var pipeline. Using the ML context, I'm going to use a transformation uh, catalog here. And first off, what I'm going to do is I'm going to define my label column. So I'm going to cop use the copy columns method here. So I'm going to create an output column for my label. And I'm going to use the input column as my fair amount, because that's what we're trying to predict, right? We're trying to predict how much a taxi trip costs, depending on a couple of features that we're going to define now. So let's start by appending some categorical transformations um, to our data. So again, I'll use that ML context object, get transformations going. Um, I'm going to say I'm going to transform some categorical um, data. I'm going to use one hot encoding. And let me just complete one column to show you what this looks like and essentially what we're doing. So one hot encoding essentially takes categorical data and converts it into numerical format. Now you might be thinking, well, with numerical format, doesn't that suggest that it's going to leave so off some ordering? Uh, and you would be right. So what one hot encoding does, not only does it uh, convert the categories into numerical um, in numerical format, but then it also removes the representation, um, uh, removes the ordering um, of those numerical um, outputs. So for example, with that vendor ID encoded, depending on the vendor ID that we provide it. So VTS, let's say that's transformed to one. If there's another vendor um, within our data set, which there are, um, and that gets assigned um, number two, essentially what one hot encoding does, yes, it transforms it into those numbers, but then it doesn't, it then removes um, any ordering. So VTS may be assigned the number one, but number one isn't more important than number two, or vice versa, number two doesn't have a stronger weight than number one might. Um, so it's just a way of essentially getting those category, um, that category data and just turning it into numbers that don't have any ordering. So let me apply this or one hot encoding to our rate encoded as well. Output column name, rate code encoded. Just put the input column to rate code. Ooh. And I'll save myself a little bit of time here because I've got one more column, which is the payment type, which I want to encode as well. not code. Cool. All right. So once we've done that, now what we need to do, again, remember what ML.NET expects is a numerical input of a float vector um, as a, for our features. That's going to be our input. So what I'm going to do, just ML context transform. I'm going to concatenate. Concatenate. There you are essentially all of these features. So first off, I define an output column name, which will be my features. And then what I can do is provide um, a parameter, a string array, um, sorry, a parameter of, of different strings, um, which I want to choose for my, um, as my features. So I've got the vendor ID encoded. Remember to pass through the encoded um, uh, category, not the, um, not the raw one. So rate code coded and I also want to do passenger count as well trip distance and then payment type 
encoded. Fantastic. Okay. So now what I've done is I've um, I've got an output column. I've applied some transformations, and now I've also got my features column. And now all that's left to do is apply the algorithm. And then for this, I'm just going to use a regression formula, apply some trainers. I'm going to use the fast tree trainer. Awesome. So there's my pipeline all created and a few lines of code, which is really, really nice and really, I think it is really straightforward um, way of writing a pipeline uh, in .NET. For those of you who've had a little bit of uh, experience um, building machine learning pipelines in Spark, um, I think the, the experience is somewhat, um, somewhat similar, which is really, really nice. Cool. So now that we've created our pipeline, we need to fit it onto our model. So we need to fit the model. So I'll create um, a model variable here. And with this pipeline, which is a, of type, um, it's a regression prediction transformer, I can fit and pass through our data view. So here what I'm doing is I've got my pipeline and I'm essentially saying, okay, fit this pipeline onto our iDataView object there. And that's how we will train our model. And what this will do, this will generate, um, this will generate um, just, this will generate a model. And using this model, we can actually evaluate it um, to determine how strong it is. And what we're going to be doing is I've got this another method here called evaluate. Just make sure that's spelled properly. Fantastic. Okay, cool. So what I'll do, var model r squared value. I'm going to call my evaluate method. I'm going to pass through the ML context, pass in the model we've just created, and along with the testing, that testing uh, data file path. All right, so let's jump into this evaluate model. So now when we're um, building our pipelines, or yeah, when we're building our pipelines, essentially in order to make sure that our model makes sense and it's a proper fit, we need to split our data um, into two categories. So here this is already done for us. I've got a testing set and I've got a training data set. There are methods in ML.NET that the API provides, which allows you to split your data if your data is only coming in um, from one source. But here it's already done for, for me. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to load my testing data into a new iDataView object. Take off caps while I'm at it. And essentially use the same tactics that I did last time. So I'm loading it from this text file, expecting it to be in the format of this taxi uh, trip object that I've defined. Passing in my test file data path, it's got a header, so we'll set that to true. And separates character is a comma. Fantastic. And then what we need to do, we need to use our model against our training data. So I'm going to create a predictions variable here. And essentially get the model, apply some transformation using our data view. And this predictions um, will, will just create another iData view. And then using this, we can actually generate some metrics off it. So using that oh, ML context object again that I've passed through to the method. I'm using a regression formula, so I'm going to use the regressions catalog. And then I'm going to evaluate. And with that, I'm going to pass the predictions I data view that we've um, that we've created for our testing data. The label that I want to define is label. And I want to test the score. And then just for this demo, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be using the R squared value. But I'll show you when we run this that that metrics um, will be of type regression metric metrics, and that has a few properties that we can use to evaluate our model. So I'll just call metrics dot R squared. Then I'll return r squared value from the method fantastic so now that that method that, that method um, is ready to go what we can do is test to see if it's a good fit and if it is we'll upload it to blob storage so 
take the model r squared value that we've got from our evaluate method and I'll say if that's greater or equal to 0 0.8, if it's a better than 80% fit, I'm going to use my ML context um, object, use a model operations catalog to save our model. So in order to save the model, I need to provide, I need to tell it which model I want to save, which is just the model that we fitted um, using our pipeline. Then I'm going to get the data schema view of the data view that I've defined. So that will be the input schema that the model expects um, when uh, we use and train the model in the future. And then I'm going to use the model path that I've defined to save it to that model. And I've already gone ahead and written um, a blob storage helper, which essentially is just going to upload the blob, um, model as a blob to our um, blob storage account. Cool. Oh, model path. Fantastic. Save that. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to add a few breakpoints of interest. I might just add one there. Cool. Now I'll just check my function, make sure we call that. Fantastic. All right, we should be ready and raring to go. All right, so let's kick off our function. So I'm just going to start this. Essentially, what we'll be doing again, authenticating to our blob client, picking up our local files, defining a model path, and then using this train and save model method to train our machine learning model. So once we step into here, cool. So first things off, we'll load our training data. Then we'll create our pipeline and then fit it, um, fit the pipeline onto our training data set to create our model. So we'll do that and give it a little bit of um, time to train. Um, depending on how powerful your local machine is, this will take a variable amount of time. Hopefully it won't take too long. And using the power of video editing, it's taken a couple of seconds, which is good. All right, so now what we want to do is evaluate our model that we've just trained. So I'm going to actually step inside this evaluate model, um, evaluate method here. And again, what we'll be doing is we're going to be loading our testing data set this time into a data view object and then use the model that we've trained against our training data set. So just there. And then we're going to generate some metrics based on the model that we've applied to our test data using this evaluate method here. Now for this, for the de purposes of this demo, what we're just, what we're going to be doing is just using the R squared value. But as you will see shortly, this metrics object is of type regression metrics. And we have a bunch of different metrics that we can use to um, determine whether or not this model is is effective for the problem that we're trying to solve. So here I've got an R square value of 0 0.88, so it's about 88% fit, which is good. But we can also generate other metrics like loss function, mean absolute error, mean squared error, and root mean squared error. So we've got a variety of different options available to us when we're assessing the effectiveness of our machine learning models and the algorithms that we apply to our machine learning models. And for different types of algorithms, different types of metrics will be generated. So it's just something to keep in mind when you're building other solutions using other, um, other algorithms. So now I've got my R squared value. I'm just going to return that. And then we're going to assess it or use it to assess whether or not the model's a good fit. And if it is, we'll upload it to blob storage. So we see our model R squared value is 0 0.88, which is higher than 80%, which is good. So then I'm going to use my uh, model operations catalog to save um, save my model uh, to the defined model path and using the, the schema of our defined data view as an input. So once I do that, I'm going to upload the model to my blob storage account. And once that's done, 
here's a model that I've trained earlier. So we can see that if I go back into Visual Studio, we'll just stop that for the moment. In my local settings file, I've defined it as model.zip. That's the binary format that we're going to save our model to. And there it is. So our model is ready for us to consume. Now, if I just open up this, this blob, we can see here that we've got a URL where our model lives that we can use, um, that we can actually use this URL to consume our model to. So now what we're going to be doing is we'll go into our API project and see how we can actually load um, this zip file into that function application so we can use the model when making predictions in our API. So now that we have our model available to us using in our um, blob storage account, we can now input data to make either bulk predictions or a single prediction at a time using our model. And for this purpose, we need to create something called a prediction engine, which is essentially a class that ML.NET provides us to help us make predictions. Now, we're back in Visual Studio. I'm in my APIs startup class here. And what I've done is I've created something called an add predict prediction engine pool. Now, when we're using a prediction engine, uh, we can call the predict method and we can make a single prediction um, based on the mo um, using the model that we've defined uh, to make a prediction using some input data. The problem with prediction engine is that it isn't thread safe. So when we're making single predictions at a time, it's, it's okay. But if we're going to make multiple predictions, essentially what we'd have to do is create multiple instances of it everywhere. And as our application grows, this becomes unmanageable. So the answer to that is prediction engine pool. So in this demo, what we're doing is we're adding this prediction engine pool and we're going to be using dependency injection so we can actually inject it into our function application, which is going to create taxi fare predictions for us. And what this does, it just creates an object pool of prediction engine objects that we can use throughout our application. So here we've got one function for creating a taxi fare prediction. If we wanted to read it, update it, etc., etc., we can then use um, that object pool and use it throughout our application. But going back to our startup class, so what I'm doing here in this prediction engine pool, we've got our input class, which is our taxi trip uh, models that we've got in our core project here. And then our output class, which is this taxi trip uh, fare prediction. Now, remember, we're predicting how much a taxi fare uh, trip costs. So our fare amount is our output um, that we want to want to want to get. So back to the startup class. And essentially what we're saying is, OK, with this prediction engine pool, what I want is to pass through a model from this URI um, that we're going to be using throughout our application. So in this method, I'm defining a model name called taxi trip model. Now this necessarily, this can be anything that you want. Um, you can name this anything you want. So here I'm naming it taxi trip model. But once you've named it here within your, within your prediction engine pool, um, that's the name that you need to refer to throughout the application. So you can name it anything you like, but once you've named it, stick to it. And then we're going to pick up, uh, then we're going to pass through um, a URI. So I've passed it through my configuration file here, which is our zip file that we have uploaded to blob storage. And then I'm going to tell, um, tell my prediction engine pool to essentially poll it every single minute. So the great thing about this is, say if we're, this is a batch processing example, but if we turned our example to more real-time um, stream processing, we can make continuous updates to the model and essentially what this will do, this will poll the provided URI connection um, endpoint that we provide um, the engine pool. So it will poll it um, with a time period that we define. So here I'm just polling it for changes every minute. So essentially, we can have an application where we're making constant updates to our model, improving it, iterating it, make sure it's actually performing well. And we don't have to bring our API down in order to refresh our model. We can just let the prediction engine pool essentially pull this URI for changes 
um, every minute or however long that we want to poll it for. And it will use the updated model if there is an update um, or updated model for us to use. Cool, so let's go into our one of our well our API endpoints. So here we're just going to be um, creating a taxi fare prediction. So as you can see, I'm using um, dependency injection to inject my prediction engine pool into this create taxi fare prediction um, function. This is going to make a post request at this route taxi fare, and essentially we're going to read the incoming um, request. Um, we're going to be using Postman to, to test this. We'll deserialize this object into a taxi trip object and then pass for, and use this as input to make our prediction. So here again is our taxi trip model that we defined earlier, that we named earlier. And we're using our input as an example in order to make a prediction. So when we, when we make a post request, this will um, contain our taxi fare. Um, oh, sorry, our taxi trip and we'll get a prediction on how much that taxi trip will cost um, using this model. Then what I've done is I've created a little model um, here to actually assign it an ID and then use the inputs that we provide it along with the predicted fare amount that gets generated from our model. And what I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna actually be inserting this taxi fare prediction into um, this taxi repository, which I'll just show you here, which is essentially just uploading or just taking the taxi trip DTO object and then persisting it to Cosmos DB. So let's test this out. So what I'll do is I'll um, I'll put a breakpoint there. And let me just start this, make sure it's my startup. But yep, just start this up. Give it a couple of seconds to think about. I'll put my function application here, or the console there. Cool, so now that my function started up, it looks like our model is ready to be used. So I've got this local endpoint here, which is just localhost. Essentially, if I just open up Postman. Cool, so what I'm gonna be doing is I'm going to make a post request to this API. I'm gonna pass it through a vendor ID of CMT give it a rate code, um, how many passengers were on that trip, how long the trip took, how long the trip was in distance, how I paid for it, and how much it actually cost me. So I'm going to send that. Oh, 404 not found. Make sure I've got the right endpoint, that would help. Send that, awesome, cool. All right, so what I'm going to do is just read the incoming request deserialize that into my taxi trip object and then we're going to make the prediction so again I'm using my model that I defined earlier and I'm using my input um, that will be the input that I want to make the prediction on so let it do its thing and it looks like it's predicted a fair amount of $50 so not great considering it cost us $8 so there might be a bit of error there um, within our model but that's okay so essentially what we've done is we've now generated a prediction so we can actually persist it to Azure Cosmos DB. So I'll just cast that to a taxi trip DTO, create my prediction and return an okay object response. So if I just click continue on that, go back into Postman. So here's my returned object. So Again, there's an ID of the document that we've persisted, all of our vendor ID, rate code, passage account, etc., which is part of our original payload. And then I've got our predicted fair amount. So it's, it's a little bit off, just by $42, which is not great, but that's okay. So essentially what that, that kind of example shows you is how you can actually um, basically inject your models into your function applications using dependency injection and using that prediction engine pool object. Um, so now what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna go into Cosmos DB. Here's some that I created earlier. What I'll do is I'll just refresh that. And I believe that's the same one. If I look at the ID, no, 
This is the one I want. Yeah, so there it is. So essentially what we've done, even though our prediction was wildly off the mark, hopefully you can see uh, in this example, it's just a fair few lines of code. What we've done in our API is that we've loaded our trained model into our function application using this add prediction engine pool. This is an extension that's provided um, by the Microsoft.extensions.ml package here. But essentially, we've got this model in our blob storage account that which um, we've loaded into this function application. And then we've created a very, very simple, this is not um, a hugely sophisticated um, post request that we're making, um, but essentially we've created this, um, this function which will send a post request, which creates a prediction for us using the model that we've um, injected into the function. And then once we've got our prediction, we've actually created a taxi prediction and saved it into Azure Cosmos DB. So it's a very basic end-to-end -end, um, sample. So we've taken right from our model trainer function, where we've essentially got some local data files. So our local CSV files here, we've used our ML context objects to load the data, um, build a machine learning pipeline, format the data required in order for us to actually train a model onto it. Uh, we've trained that model, assessed its effectiveness using the evaluate um, operations available to us that the ML.NET API provides and uploaded it to blob storage. And then once we have our model from blob storage, we've injected that into our API so we can actually start to use our model to actually create predictions um, for taxi fare trips. So that's the end of our demo. If you want to learn more, here's a couple of resources for you. So I've got the full demo um, of what we've gone through today on my GitHub. So if you want to clone that and have a play around with it, please feel free to do so. If you want to learn about ML.NET in general, I highly recommend the documentation. It goes into great detail about the library itself, and it comes with lots of fantastic tutorials that help you uh, get your hands dirty with the code, working with a variety of different machine learning algorithms. Um, I've also included a link to some of the samples that the ML.NET team have produced, and also to the library itself. Uh, so if you fancy it, you can help out uh, with the development of the machine learning library itself. Thank you so much for joining my session today. I hope you got a lot out of it. Um, just a reminder that this session will be uploaded to YouTube in about two weeks time. So do keep an eye out for that. Um, if you do have any questions, feel free to reach out to me on Twitter. Uh, once again, thanks to the organizers for um, organizing Scottish Summit. Thanks to all of you for joining me today. I'll see you later.